everyone! In this thought-provoking video, we delve into the captivating realm of the social influence of groups on individuals. Join us as we explore the psychological insights behind how being part of a group affects our behaviour, attitudes and self-perception. Discover the key theories, such as social identity and self-discrepancy, that shed light on this phenomenon and uncover the intricate dynamics that shape our actions within a group context. How does being part of a group affect our behaviour, attitudes and self-perception? William James, a prominent psychologist, proposed that our sense of self can be influenced by the social environment we find ourselves in. While we are all unique individuals, there are elements of our identity that are shaped by shared experiences and the groups we belong to. So even though we value our individuality, there is a part of us that is influenced by the social context we inhabit. One crucial aspect of the social influence of groups is how they impact our self-esteem. Research suggests that our perception of how popular we are amongst others plays a significant role. It is a delicate balance between feelings of inclusion and exclusion. Let's explore how group dynamics affect our self-perception. Some arguments propose that social factors contribute to criminal behaviour. When social institutions break down and there is a lack of social control, criminal activities may increase. However, it's important to consider individual differences in these theories. Two psychological theories shed light on how groups influence individuals. First, the self-discrepancy theory suggests that individuals experience a difference between their self-perception and external reference points. Being part of a group can influence our behaviour, helping to reduce this discrepancy. Second, the self-evaluation maintenance theory highlights that individuals seek uniqueness in dimensions they consider relevant and important to their self-concept. On less important dimensions, individuals may bask in the glory of others within the group. Maintaining a positive self-evaluation often involves reputational enhancement. By selecting goals for improvement, individuals within a group motivate and provide information to help each other achieve those goals. This theory can shed light on why criminal behaviour can develop within groups, as like-minded individuals support each other in pursuing their deviant goals. Social identity approach suggests that a part of our self-concept is derived from the groups we belong to. Categorization allows us to make sense of the world and plan for future actions. Prototypes play a crucial role in shaping attitudes and behaviours, emphasising perceived similarities within the group and differences between groups. However, this can lead to an outgroup homogeneity effect, where individuals perceive the outgroup as more homogeneous. Additionally, individuals may classify themselves based on in-group stereotypes, leading to depersonalisation and a lack of uniqueness within the group. Let's explore how social identities and categorization influence our actions. The salience of social categories determines whether individuals act with the group or uniquely. Category stimulus fit, which considers comparative and normative fit, determines the salience of a category. When social categories are salient, individuals tend to act based on group norms and treat in-group members as interchangeable. This forms the basis for the social influence of groups on individual behaviour. Social identification plays a vital role in how groups influence individual behaviour. Research conducted by Tajfel in 1971 demonstrated that even minimal groups formed with little knowledge about each other still create self-enhancement motives and result in in-group bias. Let's see how social identity and normative behaviour are interconnected. Upholding group norms goes beyond fearing social sanctions. According to the social identity approach, individuals adhere to group norms because they become part of their identity. Depersonalisation leads individuals to view themselves alongside the group, reinforcing their self-concept. The social self-regulation model suggests that self-regulation is influenced by social identification and varies based on identity salience and self-attention levels. Attitude behaviour consistency is an essential aspect to consider. The theory of planned behaviour emphasises the importance of subjective norms, particularly when they align with the group and are relevant to the individual. Perceived behavioural control also plays a significant role. Pluralistic ignorance occurs when individuals privately reject a norm but behave in accordance with it because they believe the group accepts it. However, individuals strongly bonded to their groups and acting in prototypical ways are less likely to show pluralistic ignorance. Devotion to the group influences the level of pluralistic ignorance. Now let's explore the phenomenon of group polarisation and its connection to social identity. Group polarisation refers to the tendency for individuals to adopt more extreme attitudes after discussing them with like-minded individuals. It occurs through persuasive arguments and social comparison processes. 
For example, with social comparison, people are motivated to put themselves in the best possible light, so they move to extreme positions to hold a more favourable position. The social identity approach provides a holistic explanation for group polarisation, indicating that polarisation emerges from in-group discussions that move away from out-group norms. This may help us understand why criminal activities can deviate from wider societal norms. When the wider community is committing these crimes, they find that their identity value is reduced. So when outgroups become too scared to commit these crimes, the identity value of these crimes increases as it depicts these crimes as being only for tougher people. Crowd behaviour is an intriguing aspect of social identity. Le Bon's crowd theory suggests that individuals in a crowd act as one unit with irrational mindsets. However, a newer perspective integrates social identity theory. The elaborated social identity model of crowd behaviour emphasises that crowd behaviour is informed by our social identity, which is influenced by the behaviour of outgroups in the same context. Additionally, police actions can impact crowd behaviour and cohesiveness, with negative interactions leading to increased cohesion and potential escalation of violence. Deviation within groups, including criminal activities, is often met with consequences. However, it plays a crucial role in the group's ability to adapt to a changing society. Establishing a common goal requires maximising differences between in-groups and out-groups while minimising differences within the group. Maintaining a positive distinctness is key and anti-norm behaviour is typically punished, while pro-norm deviance is rewarded. And that concludes our exploration of the social influence of groups on individuals. We hope this video has provided valuable insights into how groups shape our behaviour, attitudes and self-perception. Remember to subscribe to our channel for more fascinating psychology content. Thank you for watching.